Hey guys, Ryan here, and this is the Dino Fury Megazord. Halfway through the 2021 season, and honestly about 10 months later than Bandai would have made this available if they were still running the toy line, Hasbro have taken their time on their fourth combining Megazord, but luckily, it's worth the wait. Let's talk toy history. So based on Kishi Ryo Sentai Ryu Soldier, the 2019 Super Sentai series from Japan, and just five years after our last dinosaur themed adaptation of Dino Supercharge finished airing, Actually, the shortest gap ever in dinosaur themed series in Power Rangers history. Dino Fury definitely follows the pattern set by Beast Morphers and again throws the Sentai adaptation order out the window in order to bring us the Dino Fury Megazord. So, yep, it's Hasbro's overall fourth attempt at a combining Megazord in three years, following the Beast X Megazord, Striker Megazord, original Mighty Morphin Dino Megazord, and now this. And though you can tell they're definitely still learning as they go, this toy seems to have been designed with much more confidence than those previous three. It's smaller than the main Beast Morphers Megazord for sure, probably more on par with Striker Megazord, but those were already bigger in Japan, and at least this is on par with our existing Bandai Dino Megazords from almost the last 30 years, meaning they look great together. It's also our fourth Dino Megazord. Many of us, myself included, have long been speculating that Season 29 will be the end of the current run of adapting Sentai in the traditional sense, so it definitely makes sense that we bookend the original Power Rangers continuity with yet another dinosaur series. We all know that in Japan and in America, dinosaurs sell, there's some weird intrinsic appeal to them. And Power Rangers has traditionally done really well with designing them. Of course, the Sentai designers must not be immune to the criticism of repeating themes too close together, and that's why they've definitely tried something a bit different this time. So let's move on to the design. Knights, in the medieval sense, definitely inspire the theming of the new Dino series to such a large extent that many of us were expecting Dino Knights to be the name of the series. However, as we all know from the past, Power Rangers often zigs where we expect them to zag in terms of naming the series, and the names rarely if ever correlate back in the way we expect them to. So Dino Fury it was, perhaps more in line with the Thunder and Charge of the past. In fact, Mighty Morphin, Thunder, Charge, Fury, there's a fun potential crossover name there somewhere. <laughs> These five Zords to me are reminiscent of the 2017 Power Rangers movie designs. Designs that Japan perhaps like the look of enough to mimic for their own series. It's not like a one-to-one -one comparison and not even all the Dino Zords are the same. But there's just something there I think, especially side by side. There's things they've taken from 2017 Zords that are present again in these. But the combined form is totally different, and instead of a sleek warrior where it's hard to tell where each Zord went, we have a Megazord where it's completely obvious where each Zord went, and indeed is because, well, that's the torso of a tiger being used as arm armour. And in fact, if you go down the internet search rabbit hole of learning about Knight's armour, you can definitely see the inspiration for a lot of the design here. Even a Knight's most common weapons have been considered, including a sword, which you get from the Triceratosword, a mace, which I guess you kind of get in the form of the Ankylosword hammer, a lance, which you definitely get from the Tiger Claw, and a longbow, which we don't have. But, uh, oh well, how about these punching gloves? I think this was such a smart way to differentiate Dino Fury from Dino Seasons of the past, and although Dino Thunder and Dino Charge also concentrated on changeable weapon upgrades, this seems like the logical next step. While retaining the appeal of those customizations and adding more playability with actually fewer toys. Onto differences from the original, and we have to talk about the keys, a very noticeable change. Because as they introduce with the Beast Morphers basic action figures, Dino Fury's figures each include a key, which can be used with the Morpher, but actually to make it financially viable I imagine, they simplified the key designs into a holographic sticker for the knights, rather than painted moulded detail, and unfortunately no flip action like the original keys in Japan, and indeed still the show, had. Until the Megazord set was confirmed, I did wonder what they were going to do here. Would we just get red and you'd have to buy the rest of the figures to get the other four? Or would they just be including duplicates so you'd end up with two of each key? But I guess Hasbro did have other ideas, and they did include all five keys in this set, but in a completely different composition to the ones that come with the basic figures. 
For one thing, I'd say they feel more solid and less rubbery than their basic figure keys. For another, there's no holographic sticker portion. The night detail is actually mostly there this time, though still unpainted. But they also opted for a few unique changes. If you can remember the uh, infamous, hilarious Beast Morphers Megazord helmet bucket, well, this time they added an additional five. They even took the time and effort to mould impressions of Dino Fury Rangers inside each one to simulate Rangers in cockpits kind of style. A nice touch. Once clipped on, they give the Megazord heads a much more spherical head shape. I guess in Japan it was less noticeable because you had the moulding for the Knight's head back there. Whereas Hasbro's basic figure Morpher Keys are oh so very flat. They are though still completely interchangeable and equally you can use these new keys back in the Dino Fury Morpher. Of course only once you detach those buckets. And actually this was our first opportunity to unlock the black and green Ranger sounds as the Zords came out before the figures. The other added extra they put in as a bit of a flex was to allow head rotation on the new Megazord keys, something you wouldn't have been able to do with the Japanese flip ones. I think this was another clever change, definitely making the most out of the opportunity that they uh, presented themselves with. They may have taken something away, but at least they put something else in. I must say a huge thank you and give a shout out to Frankie Joa who contacted me on Instagram and offered to help me out with shots of his own Ryu Soldier toys in order to illustrate the differences here. I know other channels are going to be able to offer side by sides and I can't so hopefully this is a good enough solution. His shots are genuinely so great, really nicely detailed, probably better than mine and really help you start to see the small tweaks that Hasbro have made. The Dino Fury Zords actually have less paint, especially on the pink Anklo Zord. But to be generous to them, I would say it's more of a case of spot the difference rather than big glaring omissions. I think the Zords overall look pretty much identical, but the T-Rex Champion Zord in its battle mode is where you can start to see the differences shine. Extending legs is new for Power Rangers. In Japan, the legs were just the same size in both Zord or the battle modes. I think you can really notice the difference in proportions which gives ours a more slender, humanoid, action figure sized body than the bulkiness of Japan, where the legs seem more like a horse's or something. For the five zord combo they even changed the green cod piece to a smaller combination only version, I assume to ensure it could still kick forwards. More on that later. Hasbro really love kitting out their Megazords with additional articulation. This is our third out of four Megazords from them that have given us elbow articulation. It's also their first to give us wrist and knee articulation. So the poses you can achieve with the T-Rex Champion Zord are incredible for a combining Megazord and are far beyond what was possible in Japan. And because of how the Zords combine like armor into the Megazord mode, they've managed for the most part to retain all of the poseability in its additional modes. So yeah, Dino Fury Megazord is way more poseable and articulate than Kishi Ryuzin. Something interesting as well that I have seen online is that the assembled Megazords are actually the same height. So this time America offers a true analogue to the Japanese original. Well, what's bad about it then? Well, my out of the box impression was that my T-Rex Champion Zord left leg was rather loose. It still ratchets, which I've since come to learn some people's don't, so it could be worse, but it definitely should be better. Especially given that its right leg is absolutely fine and can hold its position. Where the loose leg obviously creates problems is where there's too much top weight or weapons in its hands, which causes it to buckle forwards. A slight drawback to the new extending legs for battle mode is that whenever you plug something on top of the shoulders or probably change the head, you have to be mindful not to accidentally push it back down again. There's no way to like clip and secure the legs in their extended mode, so yeah, just be aware. I know from online comments there's many of you out there who have experienced problems and factory errors of your own, not limited to missing ports for stud connection, studs that break off in the ports, missing pieces, and parts not attaching very solidly. I can definitely relate to that last one as well. The three pegs that hold one of the drills to the stego tail for the five zord combo, one of them is fine, but the other side is really not, and a light touch will separate it. This is really a great shame, and if you've got the same problem, all I can really suggest is returning yours or just using blue tack, which is not what you want to be doing with your one day old toy.
Of course, the inverse of this problem is that sometimes the ports work too well, and it can sometimes feel like you're going to break the piece in order to remove it. All I'm going to suggest here is applying consistent pressure across the piece uh, rather than trying to like lever it off in one direction or angle. So yeah, between the Megazord's base frame not being able to support weight and the top of it struggling to keep all of its pieces attached, there's definitely some frustration here and playing with it is a bit more annoying than it should be. Tried as they obviously have, Hasbro haven't quite nailed the Lego type brick connection in a solid enough way. I don't know if we'll see any modifications with the next set of releases or if the entire line is going to be like this, which I'd assume it would be because it all needs to be cross compatible as Zordlink, doesn't it? But now their design team have obviously got some mass produced versions in hand, I really hope they're exploring why some pieces snap together well and others might as well not even be connected at all. If you remember back to Beast Morphers, which introduced the idea of all the Zords being sold separately, you really needed red or gold, the ones no one could get, in order to actually use them together. This time for the mass retail releases, Hasbro's again decided to go with a sold separately route, but because of how small the other four Zords are and that they don't have additional transformations of their own, they're bundled together in twos. And Hasbro have kind of addressed this by including additional pieces to allow you to Frankenstein them together. Four of these American exclusive pieces are actually recolors of what you get with the T-Rex Champion Zord in blue and pink this time, but also a set of two grey arms come in each of the additional Zord packs. Yeah, these are weird. They don't function as arms. One combo uses them as a body piece and the other uses them as feet stabilizers. They're also completely unnecessary in the Dino Fury Megazord combination as arms. So I do wonder what the thinking is here. I guess the challenge is over to us in terms of what customs we can create with them. Those pieces I don't really mind, you can take it or leave it literally in the box if you're a screen accuracy purist, though I know some people have complained that they've probably contributed to higher prices for the packs. But unfortunately there is a ninth bonus piece which is actually indispensable to the warrior formation combination. Yep, it's the Tiger Claw Cod piece. I'm going to have to be very careful not to unleash my own Dino Fury about how angry this makes me. Okay, so in Japan, that part of the T-Rex and the top of the Tiger Claw had stud connectors, you know, like everywhere else. For America's version though, Hasbro has opted to change them to rounded flat studs. Basically impressions of studs that look the same until you actually try and clip something onto them. Weird. I don't get why they've done that. The drawback is that it reduces the way you can play with the tiger. I would like to attach its lance onto the top of it rather than the side of one of its legs so I could then put its second full size cod piece on its other back leg and make the whole thing more symmetrical. Because of this change, it's not an option. It gets worse for the T-Rex Champion Zord, making him a T-Rex Loser Zord. That part that should allow you to clip on one of the two cod pieces now doesn't accept them unless you blue tap them on. Instead, you're forced to use that ninth bonus piece, the smaller scale version that frictions in on a peg. Again, with fake studs on the front, they really didn't want you attaching anything between the legs of this Megazord, hey? Hmm, wonder why. Now I kind of get what the benefit is, the slim down waist definitely creates human proportions, plus the added articulation to kick would be hindered if you use the full size piece, unless you clicked out the waist joint. So to me, the obvious solution would have been to have made those cod pieces smaller. It's not like they ever really needed to be that size for like the Tiger Claw or the Tiger Claw formation. This I think is the real upset for the Dino Fury Megazord and why it can't get top marks. Hasbro showed a basic misunderstanding here for why we like transforming Zords into a Megazord. We like to see things go from A to B. We don't like to have to swap bits out and say, psych, here's part C to mimic a piece you already had. It's frustrating for kids it's going to be nigh on impossible to keep track of this piece and for long term reselling it's going to make getting a fully complete used set of this a bit of a mess to get right. I'm just so disappointed and confused by all the places that they opted to use fake studs and I just can't understand why they did it. Why introduce a new Zordlink port system and then also introduce a fake version of it on the same toy? Also one last thing the instructions. They've gone from really good to really bad. 
to me there's just no rhyme or reasoning to the ordering of it there's no text it will help you with some things but it won't explain why there's four heads in the box you'd be better off pausing episodes of the show to work out how to put different modes together or even watching youtube videos of the existing japanese or now american toys over on the flip side though and what's good about it well, the detail on this thing is in places actually as good, if not better, than the Japan equivalent. I think the Triceratosaur horn that doubles as a blade is a great example of this, with new moulded detail that's actually more screen accurate than even Bandai's. And looseness aside, it definitely, in hand, feels like a much more solid toy than the Beast Morphers combinations, which as I said back then, felt a lot cheaper than what we'd traditionally been used to. The plastic literally has its shine back after the matte dullness of last time. Also you've got the natural appeal of Dino Fury, that there's multiple ways to put these things together. Like Beast Morphers it is a bit of a parts former series, but for kids, and indeed big kids, it's effectively like having a bucket of Lego pieces to do with whatever you like. To me it seems like we've reached like the natural apex of Zord Builder which always had the limitation of being limited to an arm or leg or a weapon piece to snap on either. Here though, it's all about dress up with armor. You have the base form decided for you, but the pieces are obviously much smaller and the abundance of connection ports offering far more options. I almost wonder if after seeing almost a decade of the American Zord Builder interpretations, the Sentai designers wondered how they could feed it back into their source footage. Personally, I think Fortress combination looks the worst because of how the T-Rex legs are angled. And then you reach the original Three Zord Dino Fury Megazord, which to me gives strong callback vibes to Dino Charge. We have the Tricera Blade formation, which does look pretty good, as does the Anklo Hammer formation, though I would say they're almost too similar to each other. I guess their lack of pieces is to blame for this, and maybe that's why we have the new blue and pink parts to swap out from the black standard. Tiger Claw formation is one of my favourites despite the strange Tiger Claw body part gauntlets. And does anyone else get Stratoforce vibes from this chess piece? Stego Spike formation is another winner, a great range of parts clip on to create another unique look. Though be careful when unclipping those shoulder pads. And of course it all leads to the Five Knights, sorry, the Dino Fury Megazord Warrior formation. And what a cool idea for a shield wearing the T-Rex head. It is weird having 8 pieces left over, it kind of goes against my expectation of what a 5 Zord combo should be. It seems weird that the Stego Zord's head is the only headpiece not included too. But fortunately because of the ports you can find ways, multiple ways even, to use up all the pieces and store them on the Megazord. In the end it's just the helmet keys which are left over, but that was the case in Japan as well. Also, I really like that we have multiple heads again. It kind of reminds me of the Zeo Megazord battle helmets. I just wish there was something fancier for the warrior formation than just sticking with red again, but I guess it makes it easier in a way. You could basically just leave red in there and forget about the rest because it's used for its three main modes. Having said that, it is obviously a customizer's dream and if you wanted to give each ranger more of a focus in the five Zord combo, you can definitely do that and obviously swap out the head as well. Connection and manufacturing issues aside, Hasbro have definitely upped their effort ante with this one. You can tell this was made with some love and effort and a greater overall grasp, I think, on our collective expectations of what a Megazord toy should be. And also what it could be with its phenomenal articulation that lends itself to some amazing posing that just wasn't possible either in Japan with Ryu Soldier or if we're being honest with any of Bandai's regular line Megazords. I've been thinking about this and I wanted to attribute it to the price that we should expect more because we're being charged a lot more than what we used to be. But actually playing devil's advocate, Bandai definitely would have done this as a 3 Zord Megazord and then sold green and black separately as auxiliary Zords, same as they did 6 years ago for Dino Charge. I had a refer back to the original cost prices and for those 3 it would have set you back $69, which is actually the exact amount that Amazon are charging for this exclusive Mega Pack. And the three packs at retail aren't actually that much more considering inflation at about $75. Yes, of course, these are smaller and plastic density is less, but at least the assembled size is about the same in height. 
So all in all, it seems like Beast Morphers being super pricey and wobbly might just be a blip in PR history. This could be Hasbro getting us back on track to what we're used to, but also with the added movement that we've never been used to. Let's just hope that they actually complete the entire set this time, hey? So guys, that's my look at the Dino Fury Megazord. Feels pretty good to have current season Power Rangers toys being released again, isn't it? After another quite long drought that rivaled the Super Ninja Steel to Beast Morphers one. Thanks again to Frankie Joa for the great comparison footage of the Ryu Soldier mech. Also to everyone who joined me for my initial live stream on this thing, I hope you find that video useful if you're ever trying to assemble the different modes. Oh, and also a massive thanks to any of you that are subscribed. I can't believe we got to and blew past 10,000 subscribers. I've been doing Power Ranger Tube for four and a half years now, and as a toy channel that only posts twice a month, I think that's pretty good going. I'm really thankful that there's so many of you out there that want to stick around for what comes next, and excitingly, Time Force is up next in the Retro Review series. I do wonder if the Q-Rex could possibly eat the T-Rex Champions Order for breakfast. Size-wise, I'd say it probably can. Do let me know your thoughts on the Dino Fury Megazord in the comments. I know there's a lot of us out there experiencing the newness of this toy at the same time, so good to hear some other impressions of it. And until the next time, I will see you later.